everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'm the Compliance Evangelist, and I'd like to welcome you to this special five-part episode on assessing ethics and compliance in mergers and acquisition. This podcast series is sponsored by Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on managers ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 700 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance programs, visit our podcast series sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. In part one, we take a look at the whys, what's, and how's of an independent assessment in the M&A context. In part two, the impact M&A has on both the merged company and the parent. In part three, the need for an integration plan to be implemented. And in part four, oversight of merged companies, issues, and complications. Finally, in part five, we conclude with how mergers and acquisitions can benefit from an independent assessment. I know you will enjoy this five-part series, and you will get quite a lot out of it. In this third part, I am joined by Eric Feldman, Senior Vice President of Affiliated Monitors, where I ask the question, what's your plan? The need for an integration plan to be implemented in a merger and acquisition context. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox, back again for another episode. Today, I have with me Eric Feldman. Eric is a Senior Vice President at Affiliated Monitors. And today I'm going to ask Eric a question I've wanted to ask him for a long time. What's the plan? The need for an integration plan and how do you put one together? So, Eric, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to visit with me. My pleasure, Tom. So, uh, Eric, if we could start with uh, what are the Department of Justice requirements and what steps does a company need to take to satisfy the DOJ or any other governmental agency or governmental requirements relating to an integration? Well, interestingly, the uh, the DOJ has for some time included in its deferred prosecution agreements a requirement that a company will ensure that uh, when they go through a merger and acquisition, uh, that the uh, target company, the acquired company's compliance code, policies, and procedures regarding corruption are consistent with the acquiring company uh, and that the acquiring company's policies and processes are uh, applied to the new company as quickly as is practicable uh, to newly acquired businesses or entities. Um, That also includes training and auditing. Um, We could talk about that in a moment. But what we have seen in doing monitoring work under DOJ agreements is that DOJ is looking for a written integration plan that specifically spells out how the acquiring company has done these things, how they have ensured that, in fact, the company that they just bought uh, is has the same degree, hopefully good degree, of controls, training, and employee understanding of their responsibilities, in this case regarding corruption, but really has to do with any aspect of employee misconduct. Similarly, in the uh, DOJ Criminal Division's uh, statement that was put out last year on the evaluation of corporate compliance programs, there's a specific item that asks the question whether the compliance function has been integrated into the merger, acquisition, and integration process. In other words, is there a specific plan that has been written? And we've seen in uh, cases working with DOJ that the absence of an integration plan is going to be a big red flag and a strike against the company uh, as they try to get out from under the 
terms and provisions of a deferred prosecution agreement. So are there any specific areas that you would suggest companies uh, be addressed in their integration plan, or is it really a function of pre-acquisition due diligence or even something else? Well, I think that pre-acquisition due diligence, if it's done right, will identify risks associated with the company that's being acquired. And a risk assessment of that company as part of the pre-acquisition due diligence, and then again as part of the post-acquisition due diligence, will kind of give you a roadmap of what areas of risk need to be addressed immediately. Typically, what you'd like to see in an integration plan would be how are you going to take the new company's internal controls and apply them to the acquired, uh, to take the acquiring company's controls and apply them to the new company? How are you going to integrate them? Uh, how are you going to address any training and awareness gaps as it relates to ethics and compliance responsibilities of the employees of the new company that are coming into your company? Uh, do people understand the acquiring company's anti-corruption posture uh, and their ABC policies and procedures? And all of that needs to be well documented into an integration plan. Eric, one of the things that is um, very clear from the 2012 FCPA guidance issued by the Department of Justice and SEC moving forward up to the new FCPA corporate enforcement policy is that the DOJ will give meaningful credit and even to perhaps even a safe harbor under M&A for companies that uh, will identify a problem and address or mitigate that problem, but uh, turn that problem over or self-disclose to the Department of Justice. Uh, Do you have any uh, instances that you could draw upon where a company has uh, uncovered a problem in the integration phase and even as bad as that problem may have been, you're able to remediate it and work with the government to come up with a superior result? Uh, Yes. In in fact, I I believe there are several out there. There's one a couple of years ago where a uh, U.S. telecom IT company had acquired a uh, healthcare. IT company, uh, including that company's Chinese subsidiary. Um, And pre-acquisition, that Chinese subsidiary was giving improper gifts to government officials that continued post-closing. And it was only because of the acquiring company's uh, post-acquisition steps that included anti-corruption training, integration of the Chinese subsidiary into its internal control system and the implementation of an anonymous complaint hotline that resulted in the new company uh, having discovered within five months of closing that the CEO of the Chinese subsidiary had authorized and facilitated over a million dollars of gifts to Chinese officials. The acquiring U.S. telecom and IT company immediately disclosed what they found to the SEC and the DOJ. And the SEC brought charges against the CEO of the Chinese subsidiary personally and imposed a penalty, but they did not bring charges against the buyer, the U.S. IT company, because they had done what they called immediate and significant post-acquisition due diligence and integration. And so that really is a clear example of the kind of thing that both the DOJ and the SEC expect of companies going through an M&A. Eric, it also it, it almost sounds like one of the things you're, you're alluding to is the Department of Justice is much more focused on your process, even perhaps more than the outcome. And you've talked about an integration plan. You've talked about sharing that integration plan with the government. Is that a fair assessment that the government is very concerned about your process? 
Well, I think the government is concerned about the process, and and the reason is this. Uh, It's very simple to say, and we've seen it in a number of cases where companies will say that they have done adequate integration. But if it isn't documented, if there wasn't the plan that was followed, it's very hard to be able to demonstrate that pre- and post-acquisition due diligence to an external entity like the Department of Justice, which is why it often seems that they're more interested in the process being the integration plan than necessarily the outcome. But the real issue has to do with how can you demonstrate due diligence to a government regulator that you have done everything that you can do as a company to identify risk associated with corruption and misconduct. And then if you do identify the misconduct, you take the right steps to inform the government and make that disclosure. One of the ways that we have seen work extremely well in helping to allay some of those fears is if the company utilizes an independent monitor um, to do an assessment proactively after that acquisition has taken place. What better thing for an independent third party to come in and conduct the same or similar kind of an assessment as you would do under a government requirement to determine whether there has, in fact, been full integration whether employees understand their responsibilities and are comfortable reporting issues to their new managers under the new company and the new structure, whether there have been any training gaps and whether those gaps have been completely filled, whether the company has done an adequate risk assessment of where its post-acquisition risks might lie, So that's where that independent third party can really help demonstrate to DOJ and anyone else that might be looking that the company has done adequate due diligence, which is exactly what they're looking for. Eric, unfortunately, uh, we're near the end of our time today, but I've been visiting with Eric Feldman, and we've been taking a look at the need for an integration plan. Uh, I hope you'll join us uh, tomorrow for our uh, next episode. We're going to take a look at oversight of merged companies. Eric, thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you've enjoyed this part three of our five-part exploration of assessing ethics and compliance in mergers and acquisitions. And I hope you'll join us tomorrow where we take a look at oversight of merged companies, some issues, and complications. This five-part series has been a special presentation of the Compliance Podcast Network.